Hi, and welcome to the show. Subscribe at kevinmd.com slash podcast. Today, we welcome Yemi Famuyiwa. She is a fertility specialist and founder of the Montgomery Fertility Center. Today's Kevin MD article is The Role of Epigenetics in Fertility. Can Lifestyle Choices Affect Future Generations? Mm -hmm. Yemi, welcome back to the show. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you for having me again. So let's start again by yes. talking about this latest article for those who didn't get a chance to read it. Yes. So this article is, again, most of my articles are inspired by questions that patients ask me or talk that we, you know, when we start talking in the office. So we started looking at what are the things that can actually affect your genes? What can affect your eggs or your sperm? And and, and that's one of the things I've been doing. But also, we're now talking about things that not only affect the egg and the sperm, but things that can be translated to your future generations, right? So epigenics talks about things that can affect your genes that can be passed on to your offspring. And go... Go further. Tell us more details. So what are some examples where your genes are affected to future generations? So epigenetics is like, if you look at what can affect the way your genes are actually, what affects how the genes work? You know, so epigenetics means what can affect your genetics? What can affect your genes? and can be transmitted to future generations. So one of the things that I look at is when you look at epigenetics, epigenetics are things that tell your DNA how to behave, right? So you may have the genetic code, everything is there, nothing's missing, but environmental cues or even what you eat can affect how the gene is actually expressed. It doesn't change the DNA. The DNA is still there, ATGC, the combination is still there, but how it behaves can be changed, right? Mm -hmm. So let me give you an analogy. Yeah. Epigenetics is like when you put a sticky pad, right? You take a sticky pad and you stick it on your DNA. It's telling you, turn your DNA off or turn your DNA on, right? Things that can change how the DNA is expressed. That's the epigenetics, right? So it could either be, if you tag the DNAs, for instance, we call it put in a methyl group, right? You put mm -hmm. a sticky tag on the DNA. That sticky tag, it's like when you're reading a book, you're reading, let me say, a, a recipe book, mm -hmm. right? The DNA is your entire recipe book. You can put a sticky in different pages of your cookbook, and the sticky tells you, don't read this page. Read that page. Mm -hmm. So you can turn off which genes is read, which genes is muted, that, in essence, is what epigenetic is. You can have the DNA there, but you may not express it or you may express it differently. Mm -hmm. And one of the ways to do that is if you add what is called a methyl group, you tag the DNA with a methyl group, it mutes the expression of that DNA. You can also change how the DNA is expressed by you know, the DNA is curled around histone molecules, right? Mm -hmm. They're called histones, right? If you have the DNA tightly wound with a histone, then it's not read well. Or you could loosen that winding up, right? Then you can read it better. That's how this other things called the epi above genes can affect how the DNA is expressed. So tell us examples of, say, phenotypes that are uh, muted or not that yes. um, people can see in future generations, whether yes. that DNA is muted or not. Absolutely. Let me tell you, uh, uh, there was an, a study that was done in Sweden, for instance, where they looked at, they found out grandfathers that experienced the famine, 
during the famine, their grandsons were born and had a lower risk of cardiac death. The same famine affecting grandmothers, their granddaughters were born and have a lower lifespan. Hmm. Isn't that crazy? And this, we're talking two generations apart, right? Another example that people may know about is twins. When you have what is called the epigenetic drift, you take one twin, you put them in one environment that has a lot of stress, that has, you know, things that can affect the DNA. You take another twin that is an environment that's eating healthy food, vegetables, things that can lower oxidation, then those twins start to develop differently. It's called the epigenetic drift, right? So that's one of the typical examples. Another analogy is think about the things that can affect the DNA, right? They can affect, that can cause increased oxidative stress. Think of it as when you have a cookbook, and you take one DNA, you put it in a very salty environment, mm -hmm. right? That's not conducive to growth. You put the other one and you put it in an environment where it's got all these nutrients and everything, and it develops differently. So it's the epigenes, the ep epigenetics that's causing that drift, that change that you see. What can cause that change? What can take and, you know, knock at your DNA? Yeah. Well, what like we've been talking about, the things you expose yourself to, right? Excess cortisol, sleep deprivation, that raises your cortisol levels. Bad, di bad diet, you know, can also affect affect those. So when you say diet, bad diet, what specific things are we talking about that can specifically affect the epigenetics of fertility? So if you... One of the common ones for epigenetics, so you know, famine for sure. If your nutrient deprivation state, mm -hmm. that can affect how the DNA is expressed. If you're eating diet that's, you know, a poor diet, for instance, if you don't have a lot of vegetables, if you don't have, you know, the right amount of proteins or nutrients, vitamins in it, then you're not giving your 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 genetic DNA enough to time enough ingredients to flourish, right? Mm -hmm. So I guess one of the ways to I keep going back to the reference of think of your your epigenes, your genetic material in the cookbook. The environment is the kitchen. Bad kitchen, bad food, yeah. right? And then the ingredients you put in, salt, spices, healthy ingredients is going to make sure that the food coming out is, 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 is good. So we talked about diet. Mm -hmm. I'm going to assume smoking also affects that. Tell me Absolutely. the other factors that can really impact the epigenetics. Smoking. Smoking is not good. Well, yeah. we, we all know that. So anything, you know, if you're exposed to chemicals, for instance, chemicals that could be bad for your health, for instance, a lot of people, or chemotherapy, for instance, those things really do affect your DNA and and can cause changes in how the DNA is expressed. So you're obviously a fertility specialist. So yes. how do you educate patients in the exam room? Do you ever bring up these epigenetic scenarios when you counsel them? So what I do mostly is not so much counseling on epigenetics because most people don't understand what that means. So then I focus on, can we, under, can we, you look at what kind of food are you eating? What kind of ingredients are you putting in your body? Because the healthier the food that you put in, the healthier the embryo. And then if you're eating healthy food, you have a high antioxidant quotient to your food. Whereas if you're not very healthy, then you could be susceptible to what is called oxidative stress, for instance, that we know can damage DNA, mm -hmm. right? And can also interfere with your HPO axis. So the key focus for the lay person is how healthy can we make our environment and our bodies and the food we put in our bodies? I mean, we all know, like, give me give an example, right? 
when you have in certain socioeconomic groups, right, where nutrition is poor, the pregnancy outcome is not good, mm-hmm. right? And that's been studied over and over again, especially where you where you have some food deserts in some places, right? So there have been government outreaches trying to reach those populations to improve the prenatal care. What, what they also need to be saying is, well, we know that it can affect your baby, but did you know that some of these effects can affect your eggs going to your baby and, and maybe your potential grandchildren? So what you expose your body to, the insults you put your body through can have genetic consequences that we're only now starting to to see. We're only now starting to study more. So stay tuned. I think you're going to hear a lot more about it. So you wrote in your article that the Mediterranean Mm -hmm. diet has been associated with improved fertility outcomes. So is that something that you recommend to to your patients? Yeah, I do. I mean, I I do. I, I think, you know, to give it a name, yes, we'll call it Mediterranean diet. But in reality, it's any diet that's rich in vegetables. Mm-hmm. It's any diet that has a lot of nutrients in it. It's any diet where you eat fruits and nuts that if you're not allergic and you're eating healthy fish, you know, the omega-3 high, high fish. Does it have to be Mediterranean? No, it's any diet that includes all those things. Uh, it's is Mediterranean is a name that most people will be. Ah, oh, yeah, I think I've heard of that. I think I know what that is. But if you go, for instance, in some African cultures where they eat straight off the farm, they farm the foods, they have fruits, they have fresh ingredients. It's all their diet is almost like that, right? So you go in the village, and the lifespan is very, very high. Mm-hmm. You go to the city that's becoming westernized, and they're eating all this Western food, pizza and French fries and stuff. Well, guess what? We're starting to see the same problem. Increased diabetes, decreased lifespan, poor pregnancy outcomes. So any diet that incorporates all those things is what's healthy. And you also wrote exercise beyond its physical benefits also can foster positive epigenetic changes. So talk more about exercise. So we know that when you exercise, Mm -hmm. when your muscle contracts, you use it more glucose. You ever heard, there's some cultures where you eat dinner, go for a walk, exercise, contract your muscles. You, you decrease your incidence of a metabolic syndrome. You use your glucose better. We now know that metabolic syndrome can, if yes, there's some in environmental factors, but also some genetic factors, right? Mm-hmm. We don't know all the reasons why people have PCO and their children have PCO or increased risk for diabetes or PCO, or PCO patients have a high incidence of diabetes in their families, right? So that's part of all that syndrome, right? So exercise does help. You can do, and you don't have to be an Olympic champion for, you know, just go for a walk, go for a 20 minute, 10, 20 minute walk. I saw this one coach who talked about exercise snacks. I, I like that a lot right? If you sit down a lot, get up once in a while and do 10 squats and and intersperse it throughout the day, move around a bit, you know, do some steps and count your steps. You don't have to sit down to do the whole thing. Oh, I'm going to be an Olympic champion in one hour. Mm -hmm. You can spread it out and do little things. I think the key thing is just move your body. And one concept that I wanted to talk about was epigenetic plasticity plasticity plasticity, epigenetic plasticity so it could be reversible whatever harmful effects right is that absolutely can be reversed if you adopt a health let me tell you you know i was just at the asrm conference a couple of weeks ago and they had this research that was presented i believe it came from china where they well i'm not sure exactly where it came from but they looked at the effects of opioids um not opioids cannabinoids THC on sperm and found that it decreased testicular volume, affected motility, affected morphology. And after the the people who consumed it stopped, the effect did linger for a while. The good news was that it did recover if they stopped, right? So if you stop 
exposing your, your body to what can be influencing it in a negative way, you can hopefully reverse some of the damage, right? It's not permanent. Mm -hmm. You just have to start, you know, start now. We're talking to Yemi Famuyiwa. She's a fertility specialist and founder of the Montgomery Fertility Center. Today's Kevin MD article is the role of epigenetics in fertility. Can lifestyle choices affect future generations? Yemi, as always, we'll end with some take-home messages to the Kevin MD audience. So I think that the take-home message I want my audience to have is the more you know, the healthier you can be. The more you know, the more empowered you can be. The more you know, you can take care of your genes so that I stop seeing patients in their mid 40s, late 30s that have depleted eggs or egg quality that's so bad, right? So let's start taking charge of what we can do to enhance our fertility. Yeah, I mean, as always, thank you so much for sharing your perspective and insight and thanks for coming back on the show. Thank you very much.